So everyone watching, my ultimate response to, would I buy another Tesla? Yes, I probably would. Hey everybody, what is going on? I got the car out today. We're on new software, just got in last night. I think a few people are on this, but the 2020.40.4, that's a, a brand new update here. But today we're gonna discuss that as well as one year of ownership and 34,000 miles. Would I buy another Tesla? Let's find out. All right, so first things first, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take this on a drive, see if there's anything different. We'll look in the menu here. All right, so what we're gonna see here is we see the speed assist improvements. We got the priority Bluetooth device and the glove box pin. Well, there's a little bit of an error, I guess you could say, in the update here. It's indicating that when you go to controls, autopilot, and speed limit, there's a notice in there that you can turn this on or off to uh, have the car slow down or speed up with that. But let's jump in there and see if we can find that. So it's under controls, they say autopilot. And somewhere in here, uh, there's supposed to be the speed. I don't know, I don't see it. Uh, we're in drive, let's see if we drop out of that. We'll custom customize navigate on autopilot. Nothing in here. So if you're seeing your car in this state like this, that's just the way it is. I don't see anything in here that shows where it is. If we customize summons, that's I think it's just something that they either forgot to do or it's on by default all the time. And that's just what happened on that one. Maybe that's what it is. Because it reads the speed limits. When you have the, the full self-driving visualization preview, you see the speed limit signs. There's one right here when we pull out. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, nothing in that. And then the glove box pin, we're going to go into safety and security right here. We have a pin to drive, but we have the glove box pin. We'll turn that off and then it allows you to do it. But when you do it, you can set up a pin right here and we'll just do like one four zeros so once you enter a pin in here you're not going to be able to change it it's already set in there and as you can see we did that you can turn it on and off but you have to still enter your your pin now maybe on the the website you can change it but as of right now i don't see where you can change in here once you add it in uh, that's going to allow you now to push that in once you see that you're gonna have to put your pin in glove box will open and that's it all right, so the next one here, priority Bluetooth, that's, I mean, that's helpful. Sometimes my wife is in here, so when she's in the car and you go into the settings in here, sometimes there's two phones in here or three phones. If my friends are going with me, I'll have them connect their phones so they can control the music. But the priority Bluetooth device is, is a pretty good feature because when I get in, I want it to connect to my phone rather than anybody else's. So, all right, let's get out here and drive. We've talked enough. So now I'm really curious if there's any changes in autopilot. We'll get on autopilot in just a second, but I really wanted to come down here and show you guys the speed limit sign as you've probably seen in the previous videos there. Uh, as you can see, we're looking at it right here and 35 right there and on screen, 35. Pretty interesting. I mean, it's what it is. It's reading the speed limit signs. So just the other day, I noticed that when I was driving around on one of the roads nearby here, there's a road called State Road 40, and it picked up the speed limit as 40 miles an hour on that on that street, uh, but then it disappeared pretty quickly when it, it decided that it was not, in fact, a you know speed limit sign. So uh, there's challenges with that. If you're on like Route 95 or Highway 95, and it and it sees that as a speed limit, will it accelerate? Probably not. It's going to take an average or, or figure out, hey, that's that doesn't make any sense because there's no speed limit of 95 uh, in in and around the United States. Okay, autopilot smooth through here. No troubles or anything like that. As always, it's coming to a slowdown. It's identifying the, uh, the stop bar where it is, and there is, in fact, two stop signs on each side over here, and it shows both of them. And it puts that, li that line marker right in there really good. It stopped a little bit early on that one. Uh, 
Don't know why, but uh, probably because of the crappy markings on the road. And there's that 25 mile an hour stop sign right here. There we go. All right, so this roadway that we're coming up, I test autopilot on every single time. It's it, If you look at the map and see what it is, it's actually, I guess it isn't full 90 degree turn. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a 90 degree turn. Let me turn, pull that down. You guys might be able to see it right there on the map. So we're gonna go through that one there a couple different ways. Now, spoiler alert, in the past, I go through this autopilot can't navigate this turn. I hate to say it. Now, I looked at it the other day on a little bit better of an aspect of why I don't think this thing could handle it, but all in all, it, it doesn't real well. So, all right, so we're following a car through here. That's going to tell me that, hey, this car can make it at this speed. We can too. They're hitting the brakes right there. So on the right-hand side of the road, there's a loss of the, um, loss of the, yep, see, there we go. We can't get through it. Same, same thing. So we're going to go back through it one more time, just like this. Same results, as always. The only thing I can tr contribute it to is that right-hand side loses its paint on the road there. Uh, I might come down here at night and paint that side of the road. What do you think? Check it out and try it. All right, so when I go through it this way, it really freaks me out. I just don't know what to do. We got lane markings on the left. We have lane markings on the right. Should be no problem. Cuts in tight, just like it always does, and then straight into the guardrail right there. So this 90 degree turn, nothing has changed in autopilot. Let's get on to the review of ownership for this car for a year. All right, as I was saying, after one year of ownership and nine, let me see how many miles we have, 30,000, 34,000? Yeah, 34,000 miles. And I have it indicated on here forever, but we only have 9,000 miles of data on here, and I have an average of 250 watts per mile there. And, oh, look at that. We got an autopilot unable to proceed. I'm not sure why. What caused this here? Uh, this is at a stop sign, a four-way stop, and nothing in front. Well, that was weird. I just hit the stock and it went through. Okay. Now it's indicating that it's stopping for a traffic control in uh, 500 feet, which is indicated at T intersection. Love the autopilot. Love it, love it, love it. I, it reduces workload when you're driving by a lot. I don't know the percentage, but it's a lot. So after one year of ownership in a standard range plus, I've done very little maintenance on this car with the only thing being done was rotating the tires and changing the cabin air filter here. And that was about it. We got that funky smell probably about 25,000 miles right at the one year mark. And that's all we've done to it. And that change was pretty easy. I'll link that video here so you can see it. It took about 35 minutes to do. I got the parts online and it was about $20. You don't need too many special tools. There's one angle bracket that you need and you can do it yourself. It is a very bad design, the location of it. Uh, the Hyundai and the Ford, the Ford's not a great design either, but the Hyundai that we had previous to this, it was pull the, dat, pull the glove box down and pull this little tab out, pull the filter out, replace another one, and you're totally done. That was it. Uh, it was about a four minute to five minute change, and while this one is a bit longer. All right, so paint quality. So many people complain about the paint quality on these cars. I have to admit, I, I got a black car. Paint on black cars suck. If you're thinking about paint quality, get yourself something other than a black or the darker gray, I would imagine, because it's gonna show everything and anything. So after owning this car for like two or three years, if I wanna get something done to it, there's a couple different options I can do. I can buy a whole brand new bumper, stick it on. Uh, they come painted from the factory. So I could technically do that for, I think it's about, 12 to $1,500 for the front bumper. Probably take me about anywhere from four to six hours to replace everything and put it in there. I could do that, or I could have it wrapped, the whole entire car wrapped for you know, $3,000, $4,000, or I could have the car painted. So either way, I'm gonna have to spend the money one way or another in order to keep that paint looking like brand new. Now, most of the damage on it, if you will, from rocks and stuff is on the very front bumper. Uh, but some on the hood as well. There's not too much, but it's it's still where it kind of frustrates you when you look at it. So maybe if you are thinking about it, get the uh, front bumper wrapped up. You might uh, find yourself a year later saying, man, I'm so glad that I did that. Service and support. That's one thing that I want to talk about here Tesla's been very accommodating with me. I don't know why. They really don't know that I do videos, and I'm not that popular when it comes down to making videos. Yes, my initial video for going in and purchasing the car 
went pretty you know crazy 250 300,000 views on it but they really don't know me and Eatonville has been really accommodating that's the one that's in Orlando uh, there's a couple advisors there the only two that I worked with which is Steven and uh, Prince they've been really accommodating we've gotten loaner cars when it needed to uh, when we brought it in a lot of people reported that there is trouble with the uh, customer service I haven't seen it there's only been one time that I could say I've seen it is is when I ask about the battery now a couple of the repairs that I've had since I've had the vehicle uh, very simple ones but one was so troublesome that we couldn't figure out what it was uh, at periods of time the car would creep forward while I'm in autopilot almost hit the car in front of us and I have to take over and intervene and what it was it was a stuck accelerator pedal it was slightly stuck and I guess the switch in there it was felt like the switch was reading that I had my foot on the accelerator when I didn't when it was it was just it was very faint it wasn't like it was accelerating crazy but what it was doing was just creeping forward ever so slightly and it was doing it on the interstate it was doing it while I was at traffic lights that took forever they replaced hardware they replaced cameras they didn't replace the triple stack up top here but that was the next one I'm like what could it be uh, but it ultimately turned out to be the pedal assembly that was it so if your car does that and it's creeping forward get that pedal assembly replaced tell them that's what it is because that's what we did we it took forever now most recently the other problem that we had was the seat belts the seat belts in the back were not working properly uh, one of them wouldn't latch and they won't latch with each other and each one of those seat belts should latch within each seat belt just in case there's a failure of a seat belt but they did fix that uh, real simple and easy fix it took like five days though to get the seat belt part in and what they did is just take the the seat belt off pull it out and put a new one in and then I was ready to go that was the other fix of it and each time uh, we were provided a loaner car now normally what they'll do is they'll give you uber credits and when we did get uber credits on one of those service trips it was like four or five hundred dollars worth I don't know how they can afford it maybe uber gives them some type of a break for buying that stuff in bulk but Tesla is again accommodating when it comes down to uh, providing some which way or another to get yourself uh, home uh, the only problem is that I chewed up about $120 worth of that getting home because we're about 70 miles from uh, the place itself. Tires. Now I haven't changed any of these tires. The only thing I've done on these tires is rotate them I think three times since we've had it. About every 10,000 miles. I believe Tesla recommends somewhere around that range anyway, maybe 12,000. We'll look it up in the manual and figure that out. Now rotating them, uh, it didn't cost me anything. I didn't do it with Tesla service. They charge anywhere from like 70 to $125 if mobile service comes out and does it. I, I don't need to do that. I bought the pucks, which those are not even needed, but I bought the pucks anyway. And I take them down to this uh, company right down the street, Boulevard Tire. Super awesome place. Uh, they do the tire rotation for free. I tip the guys that are working there and I'm in and out. They got it done in about five to 10 minutes. I mean, it literally takes just that little bit of a time. Now with the tires, I do have a gauge here. We're gonna check the tire tread. I think we're at 330 seconds. We still have a couple of, we still have a little bit of life left on these tires. Ultimately, this car is a rear wheel drive. It is a standard range plus, so we don't have the power and the torque like the other cars do. Uh, but like I said, with drivability, keeping this car on the road is great. Now I wanna give you guys a tip when you are looking for tires. If you do buy a standard range plus and you're thinking like, hey, I wanna buy a car, a Tesla, and then you get the car and you want to start saving some money and, and figuring out where you can get tires if you go to a regular service center or a discount tire you're going to be about twelve hundred dollars for new tires on the car now the price might vary by the time that you're watching this video but uh, that was the price that i got quoted for the uh, michelin tires that are currently on this here with the acoustic foam inside so what i decided to do look around on marketplaces and find someone that was selling their cars because so many people with these cars being nearly identical the black the performance they want to customize their cars and the first thing that they do is buy rims on their cars well I found someone over in Tampa uh, found it on there on one of the marketplaces and he was offering his brand new with the aero cap covers with everything that the car had right when it came on including almost 99% of the tread available for $900 that was rims tires and aero covers now why did I buy a whole set of tires here well I did hit the curb on one of my uh, drives and scuffed it up there these had brand new nothing on them 
no chips, nothing. And even those little nipples are still on it. So I got them for $900. So I recommend that you start looking once you buy your car. If you want to look around every once in a while, uh, get on Craigslist. You can get on Let Go and just search Tesla tires and you'll find them because someone's going to put on their rims and tires. And next time you go on your trip, you have a spare tire with you. That's what we did them for. So I do have those other rims up for sale. Some people will buy them. There's a lot of people that want to buy the rims, even use like that, just to have a spare tire that's a matching tire. And ultimately, I'll get my tires for free. All right, so now I want to talk about one of the things that I'm kind of disappointed at with purchasing the car here. Uh, it's just a regretful thing. It's not anything that really Tesla's done, but it's my decision. Uh, I paid $7,000 for Autopilot when it came out there. It was an addition to the car. And I mean Autopilot, I mean full self-driving. So what I could have done at that point in time is put $7,000 into Tesla and turn that $7,000 probably into something like sixty to 80000 Pay for this car in its entirety. But instead, I, I went with the route because I drive a lot on the interstate and decided to purchase that. Now, the regretful part of it is just not spending $7,000 on Tesla stock, which is a gamble in itself, and so is the purchasing of the full self-driving. Tesla full self-driving said that it was supposed to be available in the end of 2019. Well, that came and went, and we're still looking at it where the full self-driving is not available. Now, Tesla indicated that there's going to be an update very soon. I think he tweeted or indicated that there is full self-driving coming very soon. I have a feeling that Hardware 3 is not going to be sufficient enough to get full self-driving. Well, I hope so. So if I had to do it all over again, would I spend the money and buy Autopilot? Mm, I would go with the Enhanced Autopilot at this point in time. But the thing that you run into is when you own a car, I don't. I usually own cars for 100,000 miles to 125,000 miles. And I am going to be creeping up on that very quickly. That's the problem that I'm worried about here is when this car gets to its in stages here in my life, uh, then what do I do? The repairs, once you get out of warranty, and that's one of the reasons why that I do sell the cars or get rid of them out of warranty, is because I don't want to have a repair like a headlight being $2,000 or a motor being, I think they're $5,000 or $10,000 for a brand new motor. Now, with a lot of the wrecked cars and these Teslas being wrecked on the roadway, you can probably find those parts used in secondhand I'm just afraid of it. If, for instance, a motor goes out on this car, this car is going up on jacks, and I'm going to part it out and sell every piece and part on here because I can get more for it than selling it outright with a broken motor or repairing it and then getting a broken motor. So when warranty comes, yeah, we're going to part it out, including that battery. That battery is going to be disassembled, and we're going to either sell the battery as a whole or I'm going to sell each one of those individual batteries in there. Uh, that's, that's what's really going to happen once we get out of warranty and we have a major repair. Other than that, if the car drives great, I haven't had any issues uh, major-wise. There's been no weird noises. The only thing that we had was that foot pedal, and that was it. So let's talk about summons and all the little features that, that come with this here that were pushed out, I think, prematurely. Now, summons works great when you're coming in out of your garage, but on the most part, it doesn't work really well when it's raining where it should be utilized or when it's in a uh, parking lot where your car has to come and pick you up. There's just too many variables in there and people are careless enough and they'll just walk around in it. And But other than that, I, with it's a cool party trick, that's what I think. When they get full self-driving that figured out, I think that's gonna be, summons would be better or auto park, but I just don't see that it's going to be practical just because of the way parking lots are and you're gonna have to have ideal and perfect conditions in order for uh, summons and auto park to work. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be able to do that. And we're just gonna have to wait for the updates on here. I really like it because my costs have nearly come down either half or 75%. But now that gas prices are down, it's the savings is not that great. But still, I'm only paying 11 cents per kilowatt hour at home. And that turns out to be very insignificant when it comes down to going to the pump. It's pretty awesome that there's superchargers nearly everywhere. If you look on a map, there's superchargers throughout everywhere. I've only come across a couple of places that, that the superchargers were not available, and I had to rely on either PlugShare or ChargePoint in order to actually find a charger. Uh, there was a few at car dealerships. If it wasn't for that, I would just have my 110 plug and stay at a hotel that allowed or had an option to charge on the outside of their property. 
Time at Superchargers, I learned that they were getting the V3 Superchargers available. I was disappointed that this, the Standard Range Plus can't accept that much more power into it. I think it goes up to 750 miles per hour on the charging, which is still pretty fast, but on the V3 Superchargers, that's all the Standard Range Plus will get. Cool factor of the car, I still think they look beautiful. You know, a lot of people don't like them. They want some vent in the front, but the cars don't need that. They want that... Uh, that front end like that. I guess they designed that for the aerodynamics. I like the way this car looks. It's great and I'm down with it. I don't have any problems with it. Vegan leather. That's what I think this car has. Now this car may not be vegan leather. I don't remember what it is, but nonetheless, it's a May 2019 build. This is a 2019 and when we're looking at this car here, I have kids in the back. They are a disaster. And you can see I got the drone back there. I've got myself in here. I'm not that clean of a person. Uh, the inside of the car, including the headrest in here, does not have any wear on it. Uh, the only wear that we started to notice is down here in the floorboard is there is a little bit of foam that was like falling out of it. Tesla fixed that. They uh, inspected it, looked at it, and I guess vacuumed it. That's all they did. It's just from getting in and out. Uh, it creates like a friction area when the when the foam is there and little little drops like of that big of foam were falling in the floorboard and I'm like hey is something going on and lo and behold it was just those pieces in there uh, the seat wise I don't see anything going on with it I usually wear just soft cloth clothing like this right here you can see and then uh, shorts or jeans very rarely jeans in here the elbow wear on the car like where my car where my elbow rests all the time I don't see any damage or anything like that that indicates that there's significant wear. Again, we're only on 35,000 or 34,000 miles. Uh, the Ford truck we have that has 30,000 miles on it, you can see where the hands rest on the steering wheel. The steering wheel doesn't have that really. The only place that it would have it is down at the bottom left-hand corner. And when I look at it, it's a little bit grayer than the right-hand side, but it's not that much. I probably just need to clean the car. This car out the door was 54,000 with the... Autopilot, tax tag, registration, and title at the time that I bought it. We just got our rebate in for the taxes, and it, in fact, was a $7,500 credit. It is a credit, not a refund, so just make sure that you're doing that. You have to have expenses, and then that credit offsets those expenses. Now, I did the charger credit at home, which is Florida. Now, you may not be able to do that anymore. The Model Y might have the credits available, and if that's the fact, then you, know, you want to start looking at that if you're thinking of savings for purchasing these cars here. So everyone watching, my ultimate response to, would I buy another Tesla? Yes, I probably would. And when I get a Model 3, I think I would. I would just go with the long range if uh, my lifestyle changed where I'm driving as much as I do now. So if you are driving more than 100 miles in a, in a week or in a day or anything like I'm doing, I would probably go with the long range. It's one of the, the only regrets that I have, uh, including, like I said, with, with the paint. I, the only really regret that I have is probably not investing in Tesla stock at 7000 with $7,000 and not purchasing a long range. But yes, I would purchase another one all over again. I would stick with the black interior. I cannot do white interior. It would be gray in about a week. So to summarize it, would I buy a Tesla again? Yes. What do I regret the most? The paint, the autopilot, the long range. Those are the three things right there. Other than low maintenance, very low maintenance. And the other worry that I have is out of warranty repairs. Uh, that's about it. So would I buy another one? Yes. And we're thinking about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again soon.